I started my activism in 2009, yeah? So I'll give a brief history to my work. Yeah, do that. I was, born in, I was born in Luton in 1982. Luton's a town that's 30 miles north of London. When I was born in 1982, there was one mosque. There's now 45 mosques, okay? How so big is Luton? It's 200,000 population. And how many mosques? 45. Okay. 45. Luton was named by the CIA as the epicenter for terrorist activities across Europe. The fertilizer bomb plot was planned in Luton. The 7-7 attacks, they got their bombs in Luton. The Stockholm bomber was radicalized in Luton. Terrorist attack after terrorist attack has orchestrated and come from Luton. Now, growing up in Luton, I, as I said, when I was born, I've seen all of this, yeah? Al-Majradeen, you know, Omar Bakri, Abu, Abu Hamza, the two, their head office, they used to have an organization called Al-Majradeen, who were not, a they're now a prescribed terrorist organization, but they never were. Their head office was in Biscuit Mill in my hometown. So growing up, I had a very life lesson of the influence of Islamist ideology and what it can do to freedom, yeah? Also, the grooming gangs, which is something we'll get onto. So my cousin was a victim at 14. She was hooked on heroin and raped. She, she, was, she woke up being raped by gangs of oh, bearded Jesus. men in the, Muslim, in the Muslim community. She ran naked through the streets. Now, what the police done at the time is nothing, yeah? So I grew up watching... How old were you when that happened? I would have been 13. So yeah. she was 14. So as all this is happening, and just so people get, Luton is one of the most diverse towns in Great Britain, uh, one of the most diverse towns in Europe, yeah? So white English are a minority, okay? Most of the people I love are not white because I've been brought up in, a, in this community, yeah? So as I've been brought up, in our school playground, when, when I went to school, you had the Muslim playground and the non-Muslim playground. Mm. Like, so I had a very quick learning. And then when you go into the school- Why, why were they segregated? Well, I'm, that they segregated themselves. The Muslims did not integrate or assimilate. Oh, so see. when you go into the school dinner table, just so people can picture it, you'll have whites sitting with blacks, sitting with Indians, sitting with Sikhs, sitting with Hindus, all sitting together. And in the corner, there'll be 10 tables of Muslims. Yeah? Now, I never understood it as a child. Okay? It was from when I went to high school, I just knew the Pakistanis are very different. Yeah? They're quite hostile. If you mess with one, you've declared war with the whole tribe. Yeah? There's not a fair fight. There's never a one-on-one -on -one fight. It's all gang related. And I learned, so I just grew up learning it. But that's not to say, because some of the best people I met in my hometown were Muslim lads. Yeah? Some of the people I loved were Muslim lads. But per se, there was a real problem here. And I grew up watching it, learning it. And al um my first activism was in 2004. I was, what was I then, 20? 2004, I organized a protest. And this group, well, I, do you remember the Beslam School Massacre? The no. no, so Beslam School Massacre was Chechnyan, Reb Chechnyan terrorists had took control of a school. And this is coming again, yeah? This is going to happen to a Jewish school, I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. They took control of a school, and I was probably 2019 or something. That was where? This was in Chechnya, in Russia. Yeah, okay, I remember so, the story. And what happened was, the parents were all outside the school, and all the Muslim jihadists are inside the school with their pupils, with their children. Mm. And then they start butchering them and, and killing them. And I remember watching the parents drop to their knees, and they're screaming, yeah? And I remember watching it thinking, what, what is this, what has, this isn't one man that's gone in and done this. This is a whole group of people. So what, and then I had to understand what brings someone to do that. And two weeks later, I saw an interview in a chicken shop in my hometown of Luton with a man called Saif al-Islam, which translates as Sword of Islam. He was second in command of al Majradin, the group, yeah, who had, whose head office is in my town. And I saw him saying an attack like that would be justified in a British school. And that was my wake up. I said, who's this man? And I looked him up, who's his group? And I looked up who they were. And then I looked up Omar Bakri. And then I started understanding their ideology and trying to work out. And then for me, these are a danger, yeah? So then I organized and I looked and they used to have a stall set up. So we have a, a Don Miller's Bakery, a famous, it's like your Tim Hortons, yeah? We have a bakery chain in Luton Town Center. And every Saturday, this terrorist group are there openly promoting hatred, yeah? just openly sending people to fight for the Taliban, recruiting people. So, so the Stockholm bomber, who was an Iraqi Muslim who came to university in Luton, was a nice young man till he came to Luton. Yeah? Then, mm. then when you're vulnerable at your most vulnerability, away from home for the first time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in university, they pounce. And yeah, they, that's, that's typical cult uh, behaviour. This is what, So they pounce yeah. Yeah. and they got him and then he went and blew himself up, yeah? So these groups have been operating. So I organized a protest called Ban the Loot and Taliban, yeah? And I actually, in my pres I gave a presentation at Oxford University. When was that? That was 2004. Mm -hmm. So I gave a presentation at Oxford University because I made leaflets. And if you dig up the leaflet, which I'd done for my Oxford University presentation in 2004, 
my rhetoric has never changed, okay? <laughs> so the leaflet was put as front page of our local newspaper. And what I said is, whites and blacks are being religiously and racially targeted in this town, yeah? No one's doing anything about it. There's a total two-tier policing operation in this town where they get away with what they want. The Islamic community get away with what they want. They don't, the police do not know how to deal with these problems. I went on to say that they use drugs as a weapon against our community to get our children into paedophilic practices, which is what is now known as grooming. Now, when I made this, when I, and, and I was a young man, you know, and I organised it with my friends. We go to football together. Um, I'm, Luton's one of the most, it's, it was voted, voted the roughest town in Great Britain. Yeah? Mm. It's a rough place. But we what went, makes it rough? Um, they were hat makers. What we made were hat makers. What made history. you rough? That's all that mercury. <laughs> that's the history. Oh, of maybe. Yeah. Luton's a, it's a poverty-stricken town with a lot of problems, regardless of Islam. Mm -hmm. Luton has a lot of problems. It's, it's a rough environment. It's, the levels of violence are, are as high as anywhere in the UK. But what you grow up thinking is normal actually isn't normal. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you grow up with a level of violence in your school, on your streets, or the way to solve things is through violence. And it, it, mm. It's a poor town, yeah? So I, start, I, I organised this group. About 200 of us turned up, English men. And for the first time it worked. That, the terrorist group weren't there. Yeah? The, the jihadists weren't there that day because we were coming. Yeah? And the police locked it down. But the, what happened from that point... The police... The, tell me what they did. No, the police... On this day, the police turned up. We went, to, we went to Don Miller's. The group weren't there. We then stood, held a little protest at our council building, saying we need to get rid of these terrorists. Yeah? This was before 7-7. This is before any terrorist attacked in Great Britain. This was... these. The terrorist attacks we've seen, and the, so 60% of the Muslims in Great British prison, in, in Great Britain's jails, are ex-members of this group in Luton. Yeah? So, okay. so we, you actually had put your finger on them? I put my finger on them, and I named in the leaflet, what I named in the leaflet was the link between the street drug gangs called the, we have a gang called the Gambinos, they haven't, they're not very original, they're a Pakistani group, but they've called themselves the Gambinos. And three years, four years later, the national newspaper, so in 2004, I named them in, I named them in my leaflet, and say we've had enough of the gangs with their heroin and we've had enough of the jihadists all combining and what happened after this was i was targeted by the by the gangs not by the jihadists by the street level drug gangs who were drinking alcohol gambling they're not religious they're just out pumping heroin and controlling the streets and prostitution i was targeted by them now years later the national newspapers run a link showing the link between the gambinos they name them and and terrorists they're working, they work alongside each other. And at the time, the Luton Islamic Centre, which is the main mosque of Luton, the main Salafist mosque of Luton, yeah, um, that's, it, it's the old synagogue, ironically, before the Jews were driven out. It's the old synagogue, it's now... Oh, really? Yeah, con convenient, but Qadir Basque was the leader of this mosque. Now, at the time, I then started looking at, at this mosque because my friends who were Muslim had said, bruv, that, that's the problem. In this town, that's the problem, yeah? So I went on their website and I translated their website and I found a seven-page justification for women to be lashed for adultery, yeah? I found justification for killing for apostates. This is on the main mosque, yeah? So I translated it all and then basically I faced a backlash from the Pakistani gangs and I had problems then, but at this time, I'm, I'm being on it, I, I was part of a Luton football scene so I used to go football with my friends. The, one sat the, the Saturday would be the day that all the English lads would come together for Luton Town Football Club. It was a, culture, a cultural thing, I guess. Um, I've never claimed to be an angel either. Um, so I was part of a football scene. So we clashed then with, with the, the, the drug gangs, the, the Muslim drug gangs. And five years goes past. Um, by this point, I'm... Um, do you think you did something wrong there? No, I didn't do anything. I stood up against them. Stood up, stood up against them. And at times, so I knew those gangs because all, we're all the same age. I went to school with them. Yeah? Stood up against them. And I remember when they were getting with one of my friend's little sisters. And I rang, my sis I rang the family and said, do not let her near them. I'm telling you, yeah? At the time, don't let her near them. I know what's going to happen. And then they, I had all the gangs having problems with me then, saying, what's going on? Because I knew them. Yeah? What's going on? Mm -hmm. I said, you're not doing to her what you do. I, I know the family. It's, it's not happening, lads. Yeah? The amount of girls I know who lives have been destroyed through these prostitution drug gangs, and they start off nice with the girls. They get them in. They treat them well. They give them money. These are 13-year-old children. Yeah? For, they give them drink. They give them alcohol. They'll drive them around in their sports cars. Gradually, gradually, bang, they're gone. The girl's gone. Yeah? The girl's gone. And as I said, when the family... Is that when you became aware of... of grooming. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've become aware because my cousin and all the other girls I went to school with. But at the time, we viewed them. So at school, the English kids, we just viewed the girls ourselves. We, we viewed them wrong. We viewed them as slags. 
because they're off with all the, pa right. the Pakistani right. men, the older right. men. Right. We were viewing them in, as children, just looking, saying, what are they doing with all the taxi drivers? And what, 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 they're going out of all the, all the older Pakistani men. <laughs> Thank you.